Hey there, guys, and welcome back to episode 139 of the Inch Toy Podcast, where we discuss anything related to the Second Amendment, including firearms, gear, and current events. I'm your host, Jacob Clifford, and I'm a co-host, Jerry Mitchell. And uh, we're going to be doing a What's Up in the 2A community for this one. And uh, got a good little handful of stuff to talk about. So, um, first, uh, any personal news? Yeah, so I just wrapped up day three of five for... Uh, I'm up at Ridgeline taking their five-day SBR course. So the idea of it is essentially take a 5.56 gun and run it from zero to 600 yards. Uh, very good course so far. So <laughs> day one, we got up to 600. Um, it's really about uh, taking the information from your gun. So the muzzle velocity uh, paired with your bullet ballistics and getting your dope, as they would call it, um, and then applying that at distance um, to known targets, unknown targets, uh, varying sizes. So silhouettes down to, I think the smallest target we shot was a three inch plate um, at, at a couple hundred yards. Um, so a lot of interesting stuff. Um, we did unknown, we did a uh, like target identification. So for instance, the instructors, what they did is they um, painted a random variety of targets out in the range so they had one that for instance like said good luck uh one that had like different shapes and colors and everything and they would say okay we're going to shoot the target with say the blue square on it so you had to find it like scan the range find it <coughs> um weighs it with your laser range finder um and then figure out what your dope was and engage it yeah. it was a cool exercise uh, it's super neat we did we did a non-shooting exercise that I think is very applicable for anybody uh, kind of listening to this and trying to get into more um, identification and, and tracking and identification um, of like different objects and stuff. And you've probably heard about it like the um, like shadow shine, like I think it's seven S's, um, seven S's is an M I think because they throw movement in there. Um, but what we did is we actually went down range <coughs> safely and we looked up range, and the instructors randomly placed tactical, like just items that we've already seen on the range, so everybody was like familiar with them. Placed them up range, and from down range, we had to use our naked eye, our range finders, and our rifle scopes to identify 11 different pieces of equipment that were hidden throughout the up range area. Hmm. So they're in and around barricades, rocks, berms, cars. <coughs> Uh, Connex boxes, that kind of stuff. Mm, so it's actually pretty cool because it, mm. it's trying to train your brain uh, to find stuff. Because um, humans, uh, especially like if you're from the West, like um, North America, Europe, all that kind of stuff, we read left to right. So our brains are completely programmed to see something on the left and go to the right. And you, you know what your brain does uh, when you either don't uh can't see everything or you can't quite make it out when you're reading something you just you make it up yeah you'll just be like oh yeah i either based on the letters that are there you you'll you'll assume it's a certain word or you'll just come up with some random thing and that that's kind of why part of the reason why like eyewitness accounts aren't always very accurate yeah uh but because brain does like play tricks on you so we were actually looking at the range we're going right to left to uh trick our brains into actually seeing what was going on mm. trying to be more uh, cognizant so it's a lot of cool stuff uh gun's been running great i know it's one or two podcasts ago i talked about uh the potential issues with the gun so those have all been <coughs> corrected uh, the gun's shooting great um been shooting with the can for over a thousand rounds so far and got two more days of shooting so uh, zero malfunctions so good to go nice should you? Anything um, for yourself? No, not really. Not really anything unrelated. Um, but yeah, I suppose. Yeah, so we haven't done a what's up in the 2A for a minute here. Uh, so there's a couple different things coming down the pipeline. Um, so this is all federal stuff. Uh, nothing state related we're aware of at the moment. Uh, but on the federal level, a lot of wonky stuff's going on as far as the Second Amendment goes. Uh, so to get right into it, we have um, credit card companies that are planning to reclassify purchases. 
So you got Visa, MasterCard, American Express. They're all planning to categorize gunshot purchases in a separate, I guess, category. Um, as opposed to in the past, they were just general merchandise. So if you just went to a store and... Um, this is kind of a... You know, I just thought about this. Uh, if you go into, like, say, Shooters, and you buy a backpack, or you buy a safe, or you buy something that's not an actual firearm... Yeah, are you going to get chalked up for that? Are you going to get put on a list, essentially? Or at least your your purchase is going to be categorized? Never thought of that, but... Now, see, what we need is a credit card company who gives you, like, extra cashback rewards, or, like, points, you know what I mean, for gun purchases. Well, you kind of have, like, the Bass Pro Cabela's card. That's true. Do they have a month, like, specifically on firearms, though? No, but it's just you get, like, rewards for buying through them to, like, That's buy fair. more with them. No, nothing specific. It'd be fun, it'd kind of funny, though. but like, you know, like, 2%, 2% back on gas, 3% back on groceries, 5% on firearms. You're like, <laughs> nice. Uh, that, yeah. <laughs> and this is kind of the, the... This is a topic that I've heard a lot of discussion for probably going back 10 years or so when there is a couple, I, I think it, do you remember who, do you remember what manufacturer made the M24 stock? So, you know, like the Remington 700, the military designation was the M24. Was yeah. it like McMillan or something. Does that ring a bell? The so, chassis. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like 10 years ago or so, maybe it wasn't that long ago, but relatively recently they had issues with credit card processors that didn't want to work with them. Um, and we've seen this a few times going back a few years here and there about certain companies that can't find financial institutions to either give them loans or uh, actually process their payments. Um, so I don't know. Um, it's going to be kind of interesting to, to see where this goes, but um, <laughs> one potential problem with this is it creates a list. So it's easy, easier to track if, um, say, a federal agency that's gone rogue kind of gets a hold of your bank records. Um, yeah. Or maybe that gives the ATF <laughs> reason. Say, I don't know, say you have so many purchases within a certain amount of time and the ATF's like, oh, you're flagged, now we're going to go through your bank records. Yeah, that or they're going to use it to deny a concealed carry permit in states that still need one or this or that. <laughs> Because um, they, they find it suspicious that you spent X amount of money on gun stores. Yeah. Um, it potentially could be easier to lead to some sort of registration. Because, um, you know, it's not hard to figure out the cost of a gun. So you could kind of extrapolate from how much money somebody spent on a gun store, how many guns they may have purchased. Yeah, that's true. Know, based on the cost of stuff. Um, it's one of those things where it's a constitutionally protected <laughs> right. You know, so do these companies, I guess it's not a problem at the moment, but it, it's a, there's a foreseeable problem here. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's kind of the, the big open A question on this is what's next? If these credit card companies are willing to recategorize these purchases for no like real reason, what, what are they willing to do next? Yeah. Are they willing to report all your gun purchases to a federal agency, or are they just going to stop allowing you to purchase it? True. Fair at point. Gun stores. Yeah, it's uh, who who really knows? You know where this is going to go down. The rabbit hole could go down for sure, because uh, cash is cash is not very common anymore. Yeah. Everybody just like swipes people. a card and yeah, not a lot of people use cash anymore. So it's true. I kind of had a I had a bit recently, and I was like kind of. It was just weird to use because I haven't for so long. Yeah. But based on like a couple things that I sold, private sale, I just had some cash on hand. And I would just buy my groceries with cash. And it was just weird. Yeah. <laughs> it just, because I don't know. I do actually it enjoy them. using cash. Kind of feel yeah. like a baller. You know what I yeah. mean? You just kind of like, oh, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, you got to deal with the change. It's like a you know, weird thing. You yeah. Know, like a piggy fair. bank. Pretty much, yeah. I just end up putting them all in a. In a cup yeah. next to my laundry That's machine. Cash them in at some point. Yeah. Or every once in a while, you know, I'll pull the, pull the card. And be like, hold on, I think I got that amount of change. And I'm digging around in my pocket. Like, here's three pennies and a, you know, and a dime. Like, yeah. I'm like, nice. It's, it's really satisfying. I don't know yeah. what it is. But, yeah, pretty much. And uh, Jake's going to cover our sec second topic here. This is 
Probably the biggest one as of recently. Yeah, so got um, Biden's pistol ban and the ATF's registry. Um, basically, so this is just kind of an update on the big Biden scheme um, here. So uh, this is a, this is kind of going off of a post from the GOA. Um, so check them out if you want to kind of see it. Um, so basically, the Biden administration is updating the ATF Form One. So they're going to be um, they've begun describing its upcoming rule as an amnesty registration for pistols faced with jail time of up to ten years and two hundred fifty thousand dollars fine. Haven't heard that one before. So it's your typical yeah federal firearms uh, violation. violation. Like, yeah, like no balls. Um, yeah. These pistol owners would then need to submit Form One registrations. Including all their personal information to the federal government, including name, social security number, address, phone number, email, payment information, fingerprints, make, model, and serial number of the legally purchased firearm. So, then, I mean, obviously, these updated Form 1s will build the ATF's registry. This, this private gun and gun owner information will be recorded in the National Firearms Registration and Transfer Record. Um, the ATF's formalized and public gun registry. Gun owners will also be required to submit photo documentation that they get, that they at one point possessed an illegal firearm in need of registration and amnesty, and may also be required to pay a two hundred dollar tax per tax stamp per legally purchased firearm. Um, basically, the ATF's registry is ready to absorb gun owner information. So the Biden administration has created a complete national gun registry of every commercial firearm transaction in the last 20 years um, and initiated a crackdown of untraceable firearms not recorded in federally licensed firearm dealer records. This means that the ATF is in its strongest position yet to begin systematically confiscating firearms from gun owners. The implementation under the updated Form 1 facilitates Biden's ban registration or confiscation of up to 40 million braced weapons. So that's a... Very interesting. So, so they've created a complete national gun registry. For some reason, both you know, a few times I've read this, I've kind of gone right over that. So of every commercial firearm transaction in the last twenty years. So that's really interesting. So they've gone back and like sounds oh, like it. Yeah, they've really? tried to track like who bought a pistol brace. Kind of sounds like it. But so is that, does that mean they kind of like know, and then if you don't do it, you're gonna so they're somehow gonna violate you. But it's like mm-hmm. they violated me. Like, yeah, I mean, there's so many issues with this. You know, I bought one back in the day, but the things in the trash because I'm like, that's fucking stupid. But you know, yeah, back when everybody thought it was cool. Was like, but okay, cool. here's, a good here's an example. And then, and then, like, but again, it kind of was the change of, it was the change of the gun owner like uh, yes. mindset. It was just like you know, fuck that. You just know, put a stock <laughs> it was like, put fucking stock on it. Yeah, like, you know, rock out with your fucking and it's. It's, Ten inch barrel out. Like the, um, we've talked about it before, and it honestly, this is not legal advice. Like we put in the footnotes of every podcast, but but kind of do do what's right for you. Like how risky do you want to be? But ultimately, a lot of things have to go wrong before you get caught with something like that. Yeah. Like it's not like this. Oh, you know what I mean. It's like, not like this thing where across the room somebody can be like, "Oh my God, that's that's supposed to have a pistol brace on it," and now now that like. Like unless you go shooting at like a like a super fud like. But how would they range. even know? They don't have access to the registry, the NFA registry. It's true. It's true. I've heard of um, I've heard of those boomer cocksuckers um, calling like their local ATF office because they've they've seen stuff like that. I've heard. I've read a few stories about it. And I I could be wrong, but I'm not aware. There might have been one instance. Now come to think of it, but I'm not aware of this re- people really getting violated for having illegal SBRs. Normally yeah. it's it's sharp barreled stuff. Um, like gun, like yeah. sawed off, like shotguns and stuff. Or yeah, it's, it's, or it's yeah. machine guns. Yeah. You it's know, true. Because that's the whole Randy Weaver thing was a sawed off shotgun. Yeah. The sawed off shotgun's the easiest one. Yeah. Um, a lot of people like to get on because normally because of someone like botched a double barrel it's all like crooked and shit. Like, that's yeah. a sawed off shotgun. I know that one to see well, it. Because like, a well, shotgun yeah. has to be 18 inches too. That's true. That's so also true. It's It's a lot longer. Like, that's fair like a 16 inch barrel to a 14 5 inch barrel is not that much different no you know but you don't typically see yeah and even then like people don't I don't know you just don't yeah don't know people don't really care I don't know but so 
we did have a um, somebody did message the podcast and ask about what they should do about this, and I was it's kind of like our response to everything. Be politically active. It it is. Uh, we'll, I'll touch on this at the end <coughs> when Jake goes through his spiel. But it is it is election season coming up, so like always, be politically active. Uh, <coughs> Uh, email, call, whatever your federal people, your reps and senators. But ultimately, this is proposed. This isn't rule or law at the moment, which there is no law set to, you know, be passed for this. So again, is it's not even constitutional. You have a three-letter bureaucratic agency that is foregoing, I guess at the direction of the president, but they're foregoing our, our overall legal system and just rewriting something that they previously said was okay. And like you said, 20 million plus, which I I think it's much higher than that. What's that for braces? Didn't they say 20 million? Uh, 40 or million. Oh, they said 40. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought it was yeah. 30, 40, 30 to 40. Um, but here's an example. You, uh, you just went into the gun store the other day and bought a pistol, a air pistol with a brace on it unknowingly. And then all of a sudden they turn around and do this. Um, first off, you can have the people that just don't even know because like, you know how much ignorance there is in firearms. Like, it's oh, yeah. completely ridiculous. People don't even know. They just think it's a, a stock or who knows what. Oh, yeah. Um, but the other the other side of it is you, like, legally purchase this, and they're giving you this amnesty period, but they're also not, like, there's no provision in here to, like, reimburse you for the cost of that item. This is It's, like, it's the, the same argument for, like, the, the bump stock. Yeah. Then again, it's it's not about doing the right thing. It's about revenue. You know what I mean? And about like false senses of safety. I, I guess I'm just potentially bringing up uh, legal arguments when yeah. this, when this eventually goes, if it gets put through and implemented, if, when it inevitably goes to court and somebody fights it, because uh, I know that was part of the legal backing to fight, you know, the uh, bump stock, which is even worse because there wasn't an amnesty period or a registration period. It was just, these are outlawed. Yeah, it's kind of funny how that works out. Um, yeah, it's kind of your thing. I guess, like, depends. Do you want to follow the rules or do you not want to follow the rules? Like, it, it kind of, I don't know. Like, you have to come to a point where you start to realize, like, what, where, where's your line, I guess? Like, where's your line where you're like, you know what? The hell with the, you know, the hell with, like, what law, like, who's governing me and telling me what to do you know at the end of the day you do what's best for your own self-preservation yeah. and like abide to that but no you're in a you're in an oppressive area where there might be consequences for that possibly but take those chances as they are they might not be very great like they might not be like a very large chance you're going to get caught but if you do it might be a little shitty but honestly it, it's almost like you have to come to a point of awareness where you realize like I'm just not, I'm not going to sit here and let these people dictate my life anymore. You yeah. know, like it's my life. Live in fear of your yeah. own government. Yeah, I'm not doing it. You know, and when so, they're trying to gain a monopoly on violence. Yeah. Like, because like, you know, it's one thing if they actually have managed to track down all those purchases, but an example being you bought this thing and then you sold it with the gun. So private sale, there's no record of that anywhere. So are they going to come knocking on your door? Did you see the video recently where ATF agents knocked on a guy's door? No. They were trying to like give him shit for something you might have purchased. And he kind of like entertained them for a little bit. I and mean, then he's like, get off my property. You don't have a warrant. But they they like knew he purchased something and went there to question him to get him to like admit that he did, did something wrong. I don't even know. Uh, which is kind of going to tie into our third one at some point. But um, yeah, what, what if you... What if you privately sold a pistol brace? Are they going to come at your door and knock and ask for it? And then have you, like, try to rat out who you sold it to? Yeah. It's like a, it's a rabbit hole, and where's the manpower to even support this? That's fucking creepy. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like one bit. But the flip side of it is you, you're a law-abiding gun owner, which I hate that term. Um, yeah. I, I've heard, I can't think of the other one that I've heard recently, but there's a much better way to phrase it. Because this is the thing. If this becomes... It would be a rule of the land, not necessarily law. But if this becomes the standard, what are are you? If you don't follow this, even though this is completely unconstitutional, are you n now not a law-abiding gun owner? Like that's kind of <laughs> don't call yourself that. If, yeah. If you're not willing, like a morally to follow sound every yeah gun owner. Yeah. Um. But 
<laughs> yeah. But yeah, so you actually say you go through with this, you you fall up and you actually register your thing. They got pictures of it, they got your fingerprints, they got all your information. Um, and then what are they gonna, like potentially next, what's the next step? Probably you it's got, gotta be confiscation. You got you 40 million mean? people now that you can confiscate their items because you know exactly where they live. Yep. Kind of sure. narrows, narrows down the sh search. Yeah. Which I know we both own cans, but. Yeah. You know, I, I've had people bring up this argument a lot. It's like, I don't, I don't want to buy a can because I don't want to be on a list. And it's like, if you're worried about being on a list, you're probably already on a list. Probably. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> like oh, probably. they probably categorized you somewhere, especially with social media and everything right. nowadays. Like, oh, you like, use the wrong hashtags. house now. Yeah, you so. use the wrong hashtags in your, your shadow band. Like, yeah. Just, <laughs> like me and the boys in the gulag, you know what I mean? Just like, wow, well, chat. In the FEMA camp? That's right. <laughs> Fucking FEMA camp. Oh, God. And um. It's kind of looking bleak, <laughs> but we're not there yet, guys. Yeah. Um, don't toss on the towel yet. Be politically active, and we'll touch on that again. But Yeah. Uh, so our final story here, which kind of goes along with this sort of, another three-letter agency, the FBI is secret, uh, has in the past secretly pressured Americans into signing documents forfeiting their Second Amendment rights. Um, so this is kind of an interesting one. That So this came out of uh, GOA, uh, went through the, oh, what is it called? What's that act where they have to like release information like the federal government has to? Freedom of Information Act? Yeah. Um, so the GOA, I guess, went through the process of getting this information so the FBI had to release it. I don't even... I'm surprised this is even an actual act in our country based on all the shady yeah, especially stuff nowadays. that goes on, yeah. Uh, so documents were acquired um, through that act uh, which show internal forms that were presented to people at their homes and other undisclosed locations uh, by the FBI. 15 people were, in, were the victims of this between uh, 2016 and 2019 uh, that signed the forms which ask them to declare themselves a danger to themselves or others or lacking mental capacity to uh, have firearms. Uh, and this was done without the knowledge of Congress. So again, three-letter agency, um, not acting under law, kind of acting under bureaucracy, like they're making their own rules, going around, uh, presumably pressuring, because the FBI hasn't released anything contrary to this yet. Yeah. So this is just like the unclassified docu documents that are showing that this did occur. So 15 people lost their constitutional rights, like gave up their their rights to own firearms based on these documents. And knowing the FBI's track record, we don't know how much actual pressure they were under because um, we've, you know, we've seen all the stuff that they do or the lack of what they do with certain individuals. For instance, like uh, mass shooters, um, like FBI, like the FBI as a whole, typically, like you find out after the fact that these mass shooters like had some sort of background that the FBI was tracking. Yeah. And they just didn't act on it. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, that's they have kind of a long, violent history doing that. But well, that's like, the point. So, like, what, you know, how did they have dirt on these people? And they're like, you know, what, what? We don't know exactly, but yeah. What was the process that they actually went through to uh, to pressure these people? into signing over their rights because you know that's not <laughs> there's no no due process here at all no no judge was involved no law uh, none of that kind of stuff the old bait and switch you know what i mean like like it's it's kind of demoralizing when you when you hear these kind of federal things like you got you got banks and credit card companies and those kind of people after you uh you got the white house is completely after you and then the three letter agencies that are kind of directed by the, the White House yeah, <laughs> send, d tend to be after you. So. Pretty much. At a federal level, guys, it's kind of uh, demoralizing, like I said. But, yeah. I mean, at a, at a state level, we're doing pretty good. Um, I don't know. It's one of those things, like we say, uh, I was just talking to Nate Sackett that's been on the podcast the other day. And a lot of guys kind <laughs> of, uh, they see this kind of stuff. They get completely demoralized. And they just are like, yeah, I'm going to just stockpile all my shit hits a fan kind of equipment, and I'm just going to wait it out. And when, yeah. and when quote unquote stuff goes bad, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And it's like, we're not yeah, there yet. Uh, yeah, and then it turns into a lot of, um, 
yeah, a lot, there's like a large amount of people who end up not making a difference in the way policy is going to head. And so it ends up just screwing us a little bit more. Yeah, because you know, less people get which, involved. <clears throat> which, like, I get, the, I get the concept of wanting to say, you know what, I'm done with it. Wash my hands out because like, I, I get it. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's stupid. Like, this whole game's stupid. Um, I think that's part of the, the strategy. Yeah. It's to attack you from all sides so you feel like you don't have anywhere to go. It's a fair point. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just where people end up with it, and that's they know that it's kind of like a, a war of attrition. You well, know it's what back I mean? back with the FBI. Like, how many extremists do the F- FBI actually create? Like, there's leaked documents from the FBI that show that they have actually persuaded young males into saying they were going to commit acts of violence based on kind of their uh, like sting operations, like yeah. um, entrapment, essentially. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like. I don't know. I, I think once people kind of get into it and kind of get the full picture, the full view, if you will, um, yeah, they kind of see how much of a rigged system it is. So they, they you know, inadvertently to, you know, create um, extremists. It's kind of a similar, uh, similar concept, I guess. Um, most people start to see. I mean, it's kind of like almost like that Alex Jones theory. You know, like you know, we've talked about it like before. Like, um, we always wonder if, like, maybe he just knows more than the rest. That's why he just went completely crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah, um, you hit a certain point. Yeah, it's like how many, you know, like the staggering amount of philosophers that have taken their own lives, you know, yep. because they just, they, it's almost like they've gone so far down the rabbit hole that they don't, they can't see any any happiness anymore. Like some people, I think, they see all the bad things the federal government does. And they're like, you know what? Yep. This is ridiculous. And they, they go down that rabbit hole too far, and then they end up in an even worse place. And so that they they end up commi- you know they end up creating these extremists. Um, yeah, and it's it's, yeah, it's no kind of like is it the chicken or the egg? <laughs> yeah, you know, because if you just left people alone, like yeah, of course there's evil in this world, and that's why that's why we do what we do, like we carry firearms and all that kind of stuff, because there's just some unpreventable evil people. There's no no way you can legislate that. There's no way you can prevent all that. But at the end of the day, how many of these people could you know, if the system was better, at least, like, the mental health system, like, in this state's shit. Like, if people actually got the resources they need and they weren't feeling like they were being attacked from all sides, how many of these situations might actually resolve themselves? Yeah. That's definitely fair. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, on a positive note, uh, there's still time and uh, action that you can take at this moment. Um uh, be politically active, like I've, I've said a few times now. Um, so definitely go ahead and write emails to your elected officials. Um, you might as well just do it on the state and the federal level while you're at it. Um, election season is upon us. Um, so on, so we're recording this on Wednesday. So this will come out on Thursday. And on Tuesday, we just had the general election in New Hampshire. Um <coughs> Or is it the primary? Primary. The primary, that's what I meant. Uh, We just had the primary, so we're one step closer to having the general election in November, so stay aware of that. Um, Know who's who's what. So uh, Don Boldick actually did get the nomination for the Republican Party for Senate. So he'll be going up against uh, Maggie Hassan. So she's the incumbent. She's been senator for a while, so typically an incumbent senator is very hard to beat. So we'll see how that goes, because she's got a lot of uh, federal funding. So, it'd be nice to see. Uh, he's a vet. Um, pro two A. He was a general. He's pro two A. Um, he even went down and visited the Edgar Sherman Design Team. Yeah. Their facility. So I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, most so. definitely. And so it's like, yeah, um, yeah. You just you got to keep on top of that stuff. Um, it can be difficult, you know. Don't get too caught up in it to where you're just, you know, you're miserable. But like, you know, keep a keep an eye out for where people are standing, especially on those issues that you find important. And um, if you get the opportunity to get out there, vote, or at least, you know, make your opinion heard, talk with the right people. You know. it, it would be good. All the stuff I normally say at the end anyway. Yeah, it would be really good to get some pro 2 a senators in the state, like send them to Congress, or like uh, send them to the, uh, Capitol Hill, because the two current senators that we have are just in complete lockstep with the Democratic Party and they just, they don't have any independent thought. Yeah, and they have like literally the worst commercials ever. I just want to mention it. Like, Jean Shaheen, like, gosh, uh, she's not up, she's not up for re-election, but 
Yeah, I, what was that? Is that Matt? No, Ann Custer. She's she's our congresswoman. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, Ann Custer. She yeah. has a really annoying one. There's this guy. Apparently, his name's Cy, and he's from Contacook. And <laughs> <laughs> I hate it because I know this commercial too well. It's Where have you seen this? So I got this. Yeah, uh, complete side note. <laughs> I, so I got this app on my smart TV. It's called News On. Yep. And I just there's just something about you know listen I, I wake up at like one in the morning yeah. all right to go to work. And there's just something very comforting about watching the news. Like, I don't really, like, just the local, just WMUR. Yeah. Like, just in the background, just makes me feel like it just feels good, you know? <laughs> and so I just, you know, you get to learn about a crash that happened on 93 or something yeah. weird. You're something like, you might yeah, Something you can talk with the old guys at work about, yeah. you know? And, like, honestly. And Besides so, the weather. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. And then you also get to know the weather, too, because I never check. Yeah. And, um... And it's really funny because especially if you drive all over the state, you're like, oh, I was just there. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, I was just there too. You know, it's just kind of funny. And um, so anyways, I got this and with it comes ads, just like on the television, except they're just like, they'll just come in like a cluster of seven and you just have to accept the fact yeah. that they're going to happen. You can't skip them. It's not yeah. like, you know, it's kind of like having poor people YouTube. You know what I mean? You're just like, man, you know. I, I have poor people person youtube it's ridiculous you know i just i can't live like that all right you know you got the youtube red oh yeah <laughs> um and so basically there's this one commercial for ann custer and it's it it, it just makes you want to die because it's on literally like if there's a cluster of seven commercials three of them are that commercial and it's just this guy he's just like you know he says something like you know i just feel like nobody cares like he's like a farmer in contacook contacook I don't know how to pronounce it. I Where drive, is this? It's in down, New Hampshire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's down off it. I didn't even know we had a town called that. <laughs> yeah, about halfway down 89. I pass through it on the way down a lot of times. Yeah, I The people make, from that area that are listening to this, are it's like the same people that call this area Haverhill. Yeah, I, I always, I always, you know, make a joke out of it. Like, you know, like, well, you know, that lack of, you know, risk of being vulgar i always think of like something that's really hard to cook like that's a cunt to cook you know what i mean <laughs> and that's what i think of every time and it just kills me i don't know why it's like you know um but anyways um yeah so he just he ends up talking about how and then it's like her at the end she's like like you know i'm here for you because i do the work and then she's just like so it's just so disgusting you know it's on, so annoying like on, on january 6th the the big thing. She was one of the people in the photo in the photographs from that event that had her little like gas mask thing on. That's hilarious. There's a picture of her floating her around. Stocky ass, just putting yep. a fucking gas mask on. That's <laughs> but you know the the weird like visor like the. <laughs> it almost looks like they're going into space. That's hilarious. Yeah, she's already in fucking space, yeah. bro. Um, no shit. That's funny. I could just see that. Like, no, it's, it's, the commercials are really bad for both of them. Like, it's, it's the same thing. And it's just yeah. like, they're like, oh, we need to get to the farmers. And it's like, oh, okay, I forgot how many, how many farmers are supporting, like, yeah. Foster, you know? Well, like, they found one. The Maggie Hassan one. She, she's <laughs> like, I've been voted the most nonpartisan senator of, like, some some time period and it's like who who voted like who determined what's well, something they always did the phone like the phone like uh you know polls like yeah. you know like 97 percent of americans it's like 97 percent of, of people, the people that answer called yeah and the ones you call yeah, yeah. The, the, the people you that you call number one you called number two answered yep and then or like and then number three stuck like, actually stuck around through that shit. yeah you know, people like myself that are too nice to just be like, no. You know what I mean? Either you just like, oh, you just like hang up, you know, and it bothers you for like an hour, or you know. Yeah. Another funny story with Ann Ann Custer <laughs> is, uh, I I had to block her number. You know, like how they call you for certain things. Yeah. Because like, I, I'm always sending them. And it's not you. It's me. <laughs> like, it's it's her. It's her. It's not. <laughs> it's not me. It's you. Uh, <laughs> this is a hard breakup, but yeah, that's right. <laughs> had to happen. Like. I had to block her number. I was getting spammed by like messages <laughs> from rough, Ann man. Custer, like on my phone. I had to block it. <laughs> like, I'm serious. Like, this was like nonstop. Oh, man, I don't know if I had to block Ann Custer. You know what I mean? It's like, she won't stop. I no other politician. Like, and I, maybe they had my information because I always like do those political like email things. Yeah. I don't know how I got 
how they got a hold I've of had, me. But. Yeah, I had to block like three different numbers <clears throat> for like a similar thing. It wasn't political. The only one I'd never block is IMA, yeah, International Military Antiques, because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> because they'll just send you photos of old firearms with like no context. <laughs> <laughs> and like you just be chumming. And then you just get a picture of an MG42. Hmm. And then nothing else. That's and you're it. like, no price. No. You're just like, what the hell? Yeah. And then occasionally you get a text like, 250,000 more items added. And you're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Like, yeah. it's, it's about every other daily thing. But anyways. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, on a final note to wrap this up, um, just giving you guys a heads up, those are listening still. We're going to have a really good guest next week. Um, so I've been up at Ridgeline, so I talked to the owner, CEO of Ridgeline. Uh, one of the owners, currently the CEO, Alex Hartman. Um, he's going to be our guest for next week. So it's going to be a really good um, podcast. I was talking with him today about different stuff, and he's, he's a very knowledgeable guy. Um, was in the Marines and all that kind of stuff, sniper. Um, going to be a really good episode, so make sure you guys stay, uh, stay tuned for that next week. So yeah, we're really going to nail down the actual timeline, but it's looking like next week. So Yeah, it'll be next week at some point when uh, everything lines up between his schedule and our schedules yep. and so on and so forth. But, yeah, so I suppose it about wraps it up. Yeah, a little bit shorter episode, but that's typically how our news ones go. Um, so we'll try to keep you up to date if there's any uh, developments on this or anything else that comes out of it. But um, as it typically goes, not a lot of information gets put out on the, these kind of things on purpose. Uh, they want to keep you in the dark. So um, it, if we get them, we'll let you know. But if you guys like what you heard, be sure to follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, nh <coughs> underscore 28 underscore. That's primarily where we're active. Uh, we're coming up on 1,000 followers on Instagram. So be sure to follow us over there and let us know what you think. And... Next, we got a Facebook, NH2A. Just plain old, find us on Facebook. Uh, we have an email for questions, comments, or concerns. That's NH2A podcast at gmail.com. We also have a YouTube, so if you guys want to go back and watch the video format of our uh, podcasts, you can find those NH2A on YouTube. And finally, we have a Patreon. So if you guys want to help support the podcast, all that money goes right back into the podcast and does not line our pockets. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, first of all, be proficient get out there shoot shoot more if you know what you're doing find somebody who does doesn't and help them out if you um don't know what you're doing find somebody who does know what they're doing and uh, train with them um you know again a friend mac specialized training solutions shooting with mac at gmail.com um our friend trevor over uh you can find him over at uh on the nhrm citizen page um trevor morse and uh yeah, guys. Um, next thing, of course, is uh, be politically active. This is kind of a big part of this. We kind of already went over the spiel. I won't. I won't be too redundant with it. But you guys know what to do. Um, and uh, third of all, uh, be polite. Be a good person. Kind of person. The Second Amendment community and just the regular, good old fashioned community would like to have you as a part of. Um, don't be a jerk. Just you know, help your help your neighbors out and help people uh, understand. And maybe they'll come to your point of view. Um, catch more flies with a. Uh, Honey, or was it catch more flies or bees with honey, honey. than vinegar? Yeah it's, yeah, it's flies, I think. Okay, yeah. You catch more with honey than vinegar, I yeah. suppose. Either way. Either way. Bees, <laughs> flies. Whatever you're catching, I guess, probably they'd more likely come to the honey. Plus, they'll get stuck in it easier. There but you. um, anyways, all right, guys. We'll catch you for uh, 140, right? Yep. Take care.